There was never any intention of creating a collection or an idea that we were going to acquire this, that, or the other. It's the largest group of um, contemporary art focused in this region. He is a very unusual collector. He's a collector in the, in the classic sense. He's guaranteed local artists have a place in the history of, this, of that museum and the history of art, frankly. What makes Joe and Helene Chasen different from a lot of collectors who become associated with museums is that it was, it was really about people more than about status or prominence on their part. He's donated work to the Renwick at the Smithsonian, the Philadelphia Museum, the Mint Museum, the RISD Museum. I mean, a large percentage of the stuff that's in the museum now that's mine was donated by the Chasens. And the Chasens were always very open to um, looking at things as wonderful objects. They, they were not um, tied up with definitions. They love the relationships they have with artists, um, but also they're very committed to the museum and uh, supporting us as well. I, I have known a lot of people who collect my work, and I know people who collect it in depth. And with some of them I have become, you know, very, very friendly, but I think Joe and Aline are very unique. He has an eye, he has talent for this, and uh, he's got heart. I think it's patrons they don't want to be known as, because that has a, a sort of loaded, freighted meaning of, of sort of money and class. We're in museums, uh, which is the uh, epitome of where you want to be. I was really stunned by his generosity. Dr. Chazen is an extraordinary physician, but this was another world. For him. You know, it's really important to have people in the community who are really committed to the museum and want to see it grow and develop. He's interested in art, there's no doubt about that, but it, it, not in the way of building a collection because this is the Chazen collection or something like that. I think he really, in part, looks at art collecting as a civic responsibility. I know he does. It's a way to give back to his community. I'm not sure the average visitor will know or care who Joe and Helene Chasen are, but they may by the time they emerge from the show and see all this wonderful work. Some people in the community probably associate him with several artists, but when you see the exhibition, I think it'll be much broader than that, and that he's really branched out in a number of different directions. works that have been given by the Chasens over a period of, of 20 years. Nothing happens uh, without Helene. They're collaborators on this stuff. The idea was that Helene wanted to uh, find beautiful objects for our houses. It's an enormous mixture, but they all worked in. They worked into our houses, into our lives. You know, made wherever you look, there's something pleasing to look at. Joe had a friend who was active at the museum, Hank Cates, and that was who brought him in initially. Joe, I think, was a member of a group that we had started um, at Brizzy Museum called the Collectors Club. It was a way to um, have people at RISD uh, be introduced to collecting art, etc. They became involved and stayed involved um, beyond either my being involved very directly with their collecting or anybody else. They, they took off. We asked Frank Robinson who the good artists were. We knew, we knew nothing. And then we became friendly uh, with um, many of the artists. And I don't think we're too pumped up about it either. I mean, it's just what we've done. It's not, it's us, it's not a big deal. It's what we've acquired. We met artists when they were very young and we were able to acquire a lot of this and many of them have gotten so successful. With them, it's, it's the creativity and the people who can create and the fact that they love to live with those objects. If an object is made by someone who you really know, it has a different meaning and it, like, you, I mean, I don't wake up in the morning and say, good morning, Chihuly, but when I walk by, you know, at some subconscious or subliminal level, there is a relationship with 
trust the art and the person who made it if you know them. If he decided that artists were the kinds of friends that he wanted to have. If I were to say, does Joe like art or Joe like artists, I would say Joe likes artists the very best. I think they have to like you to collect you, so then you get doubly flattered. I think there's a lot of uh, work that they would have never have found, or a lot of artists in the community who never would have occurred to them to have in their collection, who are, who are there now. I know I see them as friends who are very supportive and believe in what I make. You know, a very special man and a real, a real friend. They've decided that it's going to be also a relationship and not just about photographs and, you know, art. And we return that, you know, back to him as well. If you added up the conversation what I had with both of them over the course of a year, you know, that 99% of it is about other stuff. Joe collects the artist rather than the art. And if we weren't friendly, we usually didn't collect or we deaccessioned the work. The purpose of the exercise is to say that living with art and knowing the artists who make it makes the quality of your life potentially better. Joe was opened the first kidney dialysis center in the state of Rhode Island. He was at the cutting edge of saving people's lives who had kidney disease who previously just died. You know, I mean, he's a heavy guy. He is a, he, without a doubt, a fabulous doctor. For me, uh, it's, um, it's a, a diversion from, uh, you know, a serious profession uh, and taking care of uh, chronically ill people. It's just another outlet. It, it's like sports, it's like reading, it's whatever it is, and it gives one another dimension to what they're about. We met Howard at a show that he and Julie had together at the Newport Art Museum in the early 80s. What happened there, Helene suggested that we, he, we would like some seating. The aspect of it that's so fascinating is that they didn't know me and that they went and commissioned. He didn't know, nor did we, whether the glass would last outside. As it turned out, it was a, this particular type of glass was not appropriate to go outside. And in fact, Howard learned from that, and he uses different glass for outdoor pieces now. Joe and Helene graciously uh, gifted them to the museum. I figured out the glass I needed to, to use, and we remade the benches in a different material looking differently, but, but again, some seating elements. All things considered, it, it strengthened our relationship as opposed to, with some people, it would have been kind of the death knell. We met Sal Mancini, the photographer. We were having a dinner one night at Eatree, okay. a rest cafe Eatree in Cranston. So there's this beautiful picture of this picturesque um, uh, village in the mountains in Italy. And I asked the waiter uh, where that was. So that's Eatree. A voice came from across the room. You're saying, uh, are you the photographer? And I looked over and it was Joe and Helene. And I said, yeah. And they said, well, you know, I'm Dr. Chazen and Helene. We always wanted to meet you. And uh, are the photographs for sale? I said, yeah. Uh, Eatree is the village in Italy where many of the people came that live in Knightsville now. So they were a little bit expensive. They said, fine. They said, we'll, we'll take that one. We bought the picture and we became friendly. Not only did he buy the work and donate to the museum, but he took my wish to the museum and said, listen, he really would like to do this. Is there any way we can make that happen? With him? So Joe arranged with the museum that me, Joe, Helene, a good friend of mine, Bobby Pacheco, my father, my brother, my wife, Susan, and a couple people from the museum had a little lunch in the museum on a day off and they brought the work in and had it set up on a little pedestal in the Impressionist room so I could see how the work held up with people who I've been looking at for a long, long, long time, really close up, and to have my work in the context of that work and see, like, is it obviously not belong or does it hold its own? And I felt okay, man. I really, really felt okay. When, and, uh, and that was a really great experience.